retinoblastoma. So this retinoblastoma is actually occurring due to the two gene mutations. This is occurring due to the two gene mutations in the RB gene. Two gene mutations are occurring in the RB gene that is located on 13Q14 chromosome. Okay. And um, the most common age of diagnosis of this baby is usually less than three years, specifically one and a half years. So usually, you know, this one and a half year old baby well, or baby's guardian will come with the leukocoria, calcification and all those things. It can be unilateral, it can be bilateral or it can even be trilateral. We can also have the trilateral retinoblastoma. Trilateral retinoblastoma means we will have bilateral retinoblastoma. And along with this, we will have a penialoblastoma. Along with this, we will have the penialoblastoma. So, trilateral retinoblastoma also includes penialoblastoma because pineal glands lies behind the glabella, which is considered to be the third eye. So, bilateral along with this is called as trilateral retinoblastoma. Another important thing, what is the most common primary tumor, which is a most common primary tumor, which is associated with retinoblastoma. Primary one is the pinealoblastoma, while the most common secondary tumor, which is associated will be the osteosarcoma. Now you will say, what is the difference between the two? The primary tumor is the pinealoblastoma. While the secondary tumor is osteosarcoma. When I say primary tumor means the patient uh, with the retinoblastoma. If the patient is already having retinoblastoma, what is the most common tumor which can be associated? Then it is pinealoblastoma. And the patient who is disease free. The patient who is disease free is not having retinoblastoma now. Now what is the most common tumor which can occur in this patient? That is osteosarcoma. So don't get confused between the Two. Now, uh, coming to the clinical features of this patient, what can be the first most common sign? So, most common sign of the retinoblastoma will be leukocoria or the whitish pupillary reflex. We have already studied leukocoria in the cataract. So, leukocoria ka most common DD is a cataract, but most severe DD of leukocoria is retinoblastoma and it is always better to over treat, over diagnose, then to under diagnose. So, if any baby is coming with the leukocoria, first take it as a case of retinoblastoma unless proved otherwise, so that you do not miss the tumor. Okay. Then, second, second will be the squint, and then is the third. Third will be your uh, glaucoma. These are the most common presentations that we can have in a patient of the retinoblastoma. If you um, Look at the root of spread. Most common root of spread. So, always remember the most common root of spread is actually the direct root. And uh, this direct root takes place via the optic nerve. Now, if you uh, see a PYQ that was asked in NSECT 2021, there was a question where they had asked the most common root of spread and they had given both direct and optic nerve. Then in that case, you have to choose always the optic nerve. So, I am breaking the controversy over it. Uh, looking at the histopathological findings, microscopic findings, if you look at the histopathology of this patient, you are going to find the flexna Stena rosettes. Flexna winter Stena rosettes. These are actually the true rosettes and how can you identify pathologically? Here you will have empty lumen present. If you have empty lumen present. While the other rosettes are the Homer right rosettes. The another one are the Homer right rosettes. These are actually the pseudo rosettes. These are the pseudo rosettes and there will be no lumen seen. So, very easily you can differentiate it microscopically. One will be the flexner winter stena rosette, one is the homer right rosette, one are the two rosettes, one are the pseudo rosettes. In one you can see the empty lumen and in another you will not see.